So uh, one really nice thing about decision trees is they are interpretable. So uh, this, uh, this is what separates them from everything else that we'll talk about in this class. So uh, they're not a black box. You can actually take the decision tree and explain to somebody what it's doing. Because what it's doing is it's basically building a formula, right? It's saying John, will, John always plays if it's overcast or he plays if it's raining, but it's not too windy. Right? So that is explainable. That's something that you could tell to a client for whom you're doing, uh, or you're doing data analysis. Um, you couldn't do that with a support vector machine or with any other algorithm that we'll cover. Um, so uh, what happens if you have continuous attributes? Uh, continuous attributes, what you don't want to do is you don't want to try to split into all possible values, right? Because numeric attributes, vari values are real numbers. They'll never repeat. So what you do instead is you introduce a threshold, right? So if you have a temperature, which is real valued, you introduce a threshold. And if the values are bigger than a threshold, then it's sort of one subset. If they're smaller, then it's another subset. Uh, and in the book, you'll find an algorithm that allows you to select the optimal threshold value. Uh, so um, now if you do that in space, what it ends up doing is it ends up sort of partitioning the space with vertical lines, right? So if this is our space, this is the first threshold, so it'll draw a line. Everything on the left is one subset. Everything on the right is another subset. Uh, then uh, it'll look at attribute 2, x2, and then do a second threshold here, right? So uh, for this, for the left subset. So if it's below theta 2, you're in set A. If it's above, then you're in set B. So uh, overall, it'll build uh, a structure like that. So that's basically a trick to get it to do discrete uh, data sets when your attributes are uh, numeric. Uh, the example that I gave talks about decision trees for binary, right? I, John will either play or not. What happens if you have multi-class? Um, it's not really that different. Uh, your definition of entropy is going to be a little bit different. So now you don't have P plus and P minus. You have P for class C, and then you have a big set of classes. But the definition is really uh, the same. Uh, and then when you do prediction, uh, once you've split up the dis uh, once you've split up the data, once you have built your tree, you look at the subset and you pick the dominant class within that subset as the decision for that node. So it's really very straightforward. Um, you can always uh, you can also use uh, decision trees for regression. It's a bit more complicated. Uh, what you what you need to do is you need to um, basically when you're predicting the number, once you know which subset the the new item falls into, you compute the mean, the average uh, value of training uh, examples in that subset and use that as your prediction of the number for the new uh, testing example. So how you use it is straightforward. How you build it is actually a bit complicated and you need a different definition of entropy for that. Um, uh, there's another way which you can uh, look up in, in the book. I'm not going to talk about that. 